today. We thank you for what you are forming inside of us because you are truly forming Christ on the inside of us. Uh, God, thank you for choosing us to be light bearers. Thank you for choosing us to be um, co labors with you, God, to lead many out of darkness into the marvelous light. And God, thank you for uh, trusting us and believing that we have what it takes to represent your kingdom on the earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> you are with us right now, and so God, we just honor you and we reverence your presence. And we say, God, speak through me, speak to us, bring us from where we are to where we need to be. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now, as I was, you know, as I was, you know, preparing for this training this week, you know, I know the Lord told me that he wanted me to show us that video. And I'm going to point back to the video throughout the remainder of this session today. But <clears throat> late last night I was up. Uh, I didn't go to bed. It's about maybe 4, 4 or 5 o'clock. And uh, the Lord wanted me to share something with you guys. He wanted me to share something with you guys. You know, and you guys need to take this personal. Take this personally. Um, Psalm 94. Verses 8 through 11. Psalm 94, verses 8 through 11. Now, we're still talking about the kingdom of God and um, just how important it is for us to understand the proper function of the kingdom of God, what the kingdom of God is, and what and how we supposed to, are supposed to represent the kingdom uh, in the earth as the church. But this is something God wanted me to say to you guys personally he says understand you senseless among the people and you fools when will you be wise he who planted the ear shall he not hear he who formed the eye shall he not see <clears throat> he who instructs the nations shall he not correct he who teaches man knowledge the Lord knows the thoughts of man and what he wanted, what he's saying to us in those in that in this passage is this: There's not a thought that you have about your life that he didn't even know that he's not ahead of you. There's not <clears throat> anything you go through in life as an individual, as a leader, because on this road of leadership, you're gonna feel, you're gonna have moments, and you're gonna feel like God, you know, I'm taking care of other people, but what about me? You're gonna you're gonna feel like you know, Lord, I hear what Pastor Little was saying. What about me? And the Lord wants me to let you know that he thinks about you. He has a per His eye is personally set on you. He knows every thought that crosses your mind. Why does Jesus weep when people go to hell? Because he knows every one of them personally. And he's with them every second of the day. It's kind of like me spending all my time every single day and every second of the day on what you told you. And then something tragic happens to you. That's personal. It's not like uh, somebody who I just saw. But God knows every one of us personally. And what he, he desires is for us as the local church and for us as leaders to understand that he needs us. Isn't that something? That a God who can create the whole universe actually feels like or actually set up the system to where he would actually need us to come to cooperate with him that's what the church is about the church is supposed to be cooperating with God or co-laboring with God we've been called to co-labor with God in everything that we do as a church now God just wants me to let you guys understand how significant your life is to him and how much how much he knows and he cares about you. Okay? He said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. To give you a hope and a future. Now you put your name in it. I know the plans I have for Isabel. Plans to prosper you. To give you a hope and a future. Now the Bible says this, Miss Chica. It says, seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be open. Ask. And it shall be given to you. <clears throat> now what is the it? Ask and it shall be given to you. What's it? Uh, seek and you shall find. What am I supposed to be seeking you for? Well he said it very clear in the scriptures. 
I know the plan that I have for you. So the Lord says he wants us to begin to seek him for that specific plan. And understand that everything that, is, that comes from your life, your prayer life, everything should evolve around what he just said. I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. So when you're praying, you're calling, you're calling God's plan that's in eternity or in heaven into the earth. God, the plans that you have for me, the plans you set up for me were for the foundation of the world. God, let that manifest in my life. I'm asking for it, Lord. And I'm standing on your promises that says, ask and it shall be given to me. Seek and you shall find. I feel lost, God. I feel like I know that I'm supposed to be living for you, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be living for. Well, you said in your word that, that you had a plan, a plan for me and thoughts to prosper me and give me a hope in the future. God, let your plans, of pro, your plans of prosperity come and manifest in my life right now. You guys, because that's how I feel. I'm leading this ministry. I'm starting. I'm stepping out. I'm doing what God's called me to do. But I battle with feeling like it's my life mattering. God, what? Why do it? Why? How can I be still at this place? Sometimes in my mind, where I'm like, God, is this is this the plan that you truly have for me? And I know this is the plan you have for me, but why do I feel this way? Why do I feel like there's something more in my mind? I thought once I got to this place, that I would I would just be living in the everlasting luxury. Realizing that you didn't have to mess with me. But you dropped me down here and you get me, you put me in there. I ain't say what he said. <laughs> but I'm just thinking that when I get to this place in my destiny, I'm just sharing this with you guys. Because when you get to the place called there, it's going to be somewhere else God is trying to get you to. Destiny is not a destination. It's a journey. Destiny is a journey. It's not a destination. The collection or the path you take on the journey, when you get to the end, that's the destiny. Your destiny is fulfilled the, the, the moment you take your last breath. That's, when you, that's, that's your place of destination on the earth, when you bring your destiny to full circle there. So just like Jesus said, it is finished. See, I said that we are apostolic people. And so we have to live like Christ lived. We have to live pursuing life like Christ. Christ was uh, 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 the Bible says, uh, Matthew 6, 33, it says, seek first the kingdom. Can somebody pull that up? Uh, open that up for me. Matthew 6, 33. This, I'm just a play on words. The Lord brought this to my attention. Seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33. God, go ahead, go ahead. Well, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, you're reading too fast. Start it from the beginning. But seek ye first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God uh -huh. and his righteousness. Oh, you're going too fast. You, you was going good, then you rest again. Seek first the kingdom of God and his. The word I'm looking for is his. his. Now, seek first the kingdom of God and his. Seek first the kingdom of God and his. So why didn't the scripture say seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness? It said seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let me help you out. Jesus is the kingdom. He, if I'm the ambassador, the ambassador for the United States of America, and I go to another country, I am the United States of America. If you touch me, you touch the United States of America. I am the representative of the United States of America. If you touch me, if you, if you try to harm me, if you kill me, you just declare war on the United States because I am the ambassador. I represent that nation in this territory. Jesus is the kingdom. He is the kingdom. He is the ambassador of the kingdom. He came from the kingdom. So Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom, Jesus, and his righteousness. You see what I'm saying? So, when we get this understanding about the kingdom, we have to understand that Jesus is the kingdom. We have to look at Jesus more than we look at ourselves. We have to examine everything about Jesus. Because Jesus is the ambassador. Meaning, he represents the laws. He represents the views. He represents the concept. Now, Pastor Little, how does this make sense to 
my life? How does this make sense to me as a leader of Restoration Epicenter Church? How does this make sense to my life as a Christian? Because when we come into relationship with God through Jesus, we become ambassadors. Why does he say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Because now, Jesus left. He left. He put the spirit of God on the inside of us when we confess Christ. He, no, 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 no. He put, the, he put the kingdom of God on the inside of us, okay? Now, now, now listen to me. This is messing up my recording, but that's fine. As long as y'all stay with me, okay? The children are fine, okay? But, so, so listen, guys. You, Jotney, you are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. You, Miss Chica, you are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. And guess what? If the kingdom is going to come to the people that you'll meet, there are people you're you around every day in Jacksonville that I will never get to. But the kingdom needs to come to them. Now, the Christ in you, the Spirit of God is in you, right? The kingdom is within that's why when Jesus, they asked, the Pharisees asked Jesus, where is this kingdom you talk about? Jesus said, it's not there. It's not out there somewhere. It's not, it's not here or there. The kingdom is within. Jesus was speaking prophetically that the kingdom is upon you. It's in your presence right now. But when I leave, the kingdom is going to be within. And it's the thing. We have to be willing to be ambassadors of the kingdom. So how can you represent a nation if you, don't, if you don't know anything about the nation? Here we go. That's why we got to read the Bible. Because you are an ambassador of the kingdom. You are an ambassador of the kingdom. And, but we, we're not left without an example, y'all. There's two things that we have to do if we're going to be effective Christians and if we're really going to be a church that is just... Guys, listen to me. I, I, I mean this with everything. I did not want to be a pastor. I did not want to be a pastor. I cried. I cried in front of thousands of people when they, they confronted me and said, you are a pastor. I, I boo-hooed. Now, why did I boo-hoo cry in front of people? <laughs> I don't cry in front of people. I'm a man. I felt like I lost some of my manhood crying in front of people about that. But, you know, that's just, that's joking, man. A real man cries, okay? You don't lock your emotions up. I'm just, I'm just joking, okay? You don't cry all the time about everything, but a real man do cry. <laughs> But I cried because you know why I cried? God, I cried because I feel like people really do, all people want to do is just go to church. They just want to have a good time in church. You know, nobody, they don't really want to be an ambassador for the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something, man. That man said that when God brought him back, brought his spirit back to his body, before he let him go back, he looked back. And he saw a tunnel. It's like a hurricane. Like, I was he saw, on the radio, talk show. He saw a tunnel, and if people were dropping in it, second by second. Listen to me, listen to me. Every 15 minutes, 2,000 people die. Every 15 minutes, non-stop, as long as time is ticking, every 15 minutes, 2,000 people die. So you know what that means? We cannot afford to just be another church. We can't afford just to just to just to be happy go lucky who just people who just come into the church and oh pastor preached a good word last week. That means nothing if you wasn't a good ambassador this week. If you didn't present the gospel of Christ to a kid, if you didn't present the gospel of Christ to a person who God let you see every day for the last six months, you seen this one person and you never shared the kingdom a message of Christ to him. You never shared it with him. That person is going to be one of those people that fall into that pit. Now let me tell you something, guys. The hurricanes that we see on the earth, the Bible says that there's always, what we see in the physical realm is a depiction of things that are actually happening in the spirit realm. Now, when people die, there are funnels, there are funnels all over this, all over the world, you have something called the gates of heaven. Listen to me now. And you have the gates of hell. Now, what's the gate of heaven? It's a portal or or or, or a place. It's our responsibility. If we we can open the gate of heaven over Altamont, 
Are y'all listening to me? How do we open the gate of heaven over Altamont? Through prayer, and through intercessory prayer. That is how we open the gate. And we keep intercessory prayer over that, over that, over that region. And we keep calling God in. The angels that, that, that um, Joseph, not Joseph, but Jacob saw, ascending and descending. They only went ascending and descending because somebody was praying. In the spirit realm, there's nothing happens until we pray. I told y'all last week that the mouth is the key that moves the invisible realm. If your mouth is shut, heaven is shut in your life. Your mouth is open, heaven is moving. But God will not, he will not overpower our will. And so we have a responsibility as a kingdom church to be a gate church that keeps the gate, the windows, uh, keep, keeps the, the, the gate of heaven open over that area. Why? So that says that no demonic principality is ruling over that area and that's keeping people from coming into the knowledge of Christ. But where the church is just have people you know, in the region just having church and we ain't going nowhere. They just having good church. Nobody's in the city. Nobody's praying. Nobody's evangelizing. Nobody understands. People are coming in but they're not being sent out. Understanding that they are ambassadors. There are people that you see every day, Liz, that I will never see. But you have Christ in you. And he's saying, what's up? You don't just let that person walk by? Hey, that's one of my kids. I can't touch him unless you touch him. Each one of us represents the hands of Christ. We represent the mouth of God. And if we don't speak to them, how, how shall a person hear about the kingdom of God unless you speak? Some people won't be touched by God until you touch them. Some people won't be stopped by God. Well, I ain't never seen God. He's on the inside of you. And so any person you stop, you touch, you engage, God just engaged them. And so we have to understand that is that a reason why I want to show you guys that is because, guys, that is why we're doing this. Do you understand that some of you can end up in hell? Mm -hmm. Myself included. If you put your hand to the plow and then look back, I mean, you put your hand to the plow and look back and you don't repent, you can be a person that hears this truth and still go to hell. Does that mean that Romans 10, 9 is wrong? No. But you can't be a person that practices sin or practices rebellion and not turn back to God. And so, don't think that we're just safe because Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. I press toward it. I don't look back, leaving those things which are behind, and I continue to press forward toward the things, toward the things that are ahead. Okay? And so, as kingdom ambassadors, we have to keep pressing toward that mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And we can't let nothing Cause us to be disqualified. We can't look back. You have to make a decision now. And the Lord told me to tell y'all this. And he told me first. I'm telling y'all. You have to count the cost of what it's going to cost you. You know what the Lord said to me the other night? Eric, do you understand preaching the kingdom message could get you killed? I said, huh? I just want to preach the message. I just want to get people saved. <laughs> I don't want to die. He said, well, Eric, the kingdom message moves you into warfare. I'm not trying to scare y'all, but it moves you into direct warfare with the kingdom of darkness. That's why many people don't do the kingdom. They just do church. Church is, I'm going to preach a good message and get people to come in and uh, shout all over the place. But the kingdom says, no, I want to take this territory for the kingdom of God. I want people to come into the knowledge of who they are. I want people to come into the knowledge of who they are and what they're supposed to do with their, in their relationship with God. So, listen to me. As a kingdom ambassador, as an ambassador of the kingdom of God, I want you to re remember that. I want you to tell yourself this every day. I am an ambassador. What is an ambassador? Is it a person that represents the nation or the kingdom for which they were sent? See? You're apostolic. You're sent just like Jesus was sent. Jesus was the first apostle. Sent to establish God's church, to reestablish it because Adam and Eve messed it up. And so, everyone that comes under Jesus' covering through Romans 10 and 9, we become like him. Which, which means we are apostolic. And so what does that mean? Is that we have to become ambassadors because he was an ambassador. The world is dependent on us. Church Universal. Altamont, there are people in this neighborhood that need to be touched by the kingdom of God.
But you have to understand that you are an ambassador. I'm not training up church people. I'm training up kingdom ambassadors. And if you're going to be a kingdom ambassador, you got to have your game got to be tight. What what is it, what I mean about your game being tight? You got to know how to use. You got to know what the Bible says because an ambassador, anything could come at you. Anything could come at you. The enemy's going to send people at you to try to shake you, mess you up. In reference to you not knowing what you know what's in your Bible. There's been people that uh, one time when I was in college, I was coming through uh, the doors getting ready to go into the cafeteria, and I heard this guy say, hey, twin, 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 because he couldn't remember, I was twin brother, so he didn't know which one I was. He said, twin, 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 we need you in the student lounge. I didn't know it, but I was an ambassador. And so what he was saying, we need you in the student lounge. I said, what's up? It was a cult, a, 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 a group that was misguided. They were a cult. And what they were doing, they were intimidating, they were coming on campus, and they was, they was basically sabotaging uh, young freshmen and sophomore students, they come in the student lounge where they was watching TV and then they would just ambush them and start drilling them, trying to get them to be a part of their organization. And so it was about 15 people in there just all lined up on the couch. Then it was just, they was wearing them out. And they said, so one of the guys was standing at the door and he saw me come in. He knew I was a Christian and he known I was known for confronting stuff. And he said, thank God, they go twin. Come in, come in, come in, come in. So I come down there. As soon as I come through the door and I see those people sitting on the couch, I see him looking in terror. The ambassador in me rose up. I said, what is this? Because that school belonged to me. Listen to me about the ambassador. The Morris Brown College was my school. I determined what went on on this campus. There ain't going to be no shacking. There ain't going to be nobody coming in here. Freak Nick ain't coming and touching my campus. This is my school. And if you ain't going to be preaching nothing but Jesus up in here. So when I came to that lounge, it was just me with about 60 other people. I came in here, and I just went straight to the leader. I said, who, 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 who? Okay, you, you leading this? Okay. So what's, what's the deal? What's going on here? What's going on? Well, well, what, 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 what? Uh, well, we don't really need this system concerning you. Yes, it does concern me. This is my school. And you're not going to just be in here talking. Let me see what you're talking about. Who's Jesus? That, you talking about Jesus? And so he started to, well, what, actually, and so everybody on the couch was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. To say to him what you said to us. I said, yeah, well, let me hear what you're what you talking about. What, what are you talking to them about? And he said, I told them, since, since, you, since you brought it here with me, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm here. He said, I told them that they don't need to confess Jesus Christ to be saved. All you have to do is be baptized. I said, he said, there, he said unless they're baptized unto salvation, they're not saved. I said, okay, I said, okay, guys, he said, unless, unless you guys are baptized, Baptism is essential to salvation. I said, is that your point you're making? You're putting these, all these people on hostage because of this point. This is the only point you got? He said, yeah, this is my point. He said, it says it in your word. I said, okay, okay. I said, turn, turn with me to the scriptures. Go to the story uh, in the Bible where Jesus is on the cross with, with two people. Okay? So he gets to that thing. I said, now you tell me where did they take that man off the cross and they dumped him in the water. After he said, surely you are the son of God. And, 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 and truly this day, and Jesus said, you shall be with me in paradise. Now, there was no pause. There was no moment of silence so they could take the nails off that man's hand, off his feet, duck him in the water, then nail him back up on the cross. I said, now Jesus said, surely this day you shall be with me in eternity. But that man was not baptized. So does that mean Jesus was lying on the cross? No. I said, baptism is only a outward expression of what just happened on the inside of the man. If the man had a chance to live beyond that day, I'm sure that John or Jesus or one of the disciples would have baptized him. I said, but salvation, the Bible says, unless a man confess with his mouth, it said, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then it say, with the dunking pool, person is made unto salvation. And you saw, I'm telling you, there was a huge, I felt the presence of that demon, demonic force leave the room. I saw people on the couch like, because what he was doing was he was attacking what they had been taught. And so they was confused. I said, you guys can be dismissed. I said, is there any more questions you guys have? Any more questions? Any more questions? Let me see your Bible. Is there any more questions? All right, bam. They got up and left. And those, I, I get him in his Bible back and I turned off and I walked off and left him standing there. And they were looking dumb kind of like, dog, how are we going to deal with him? But my point is when you are an ambassador, you protect stuff. This community belongs to you, to God, Juan and Liz. You guys are ambassadors. Do you understand?
that you being in this house, you can cover this whole entire housing development. You can keep people that are being oppressed and are being harassed by demons night in and night out. Do you understand if a witch moved into this? One witch moved into this housing development, she could set this whole block off. This whole entire community could be getting warped by demons for one person. Now, we have greater power than the, those occultic organizations. They're using the, the, kingdom of God, the kingdom of darkness power. But we have the God of the universe on the inside of us. And so, you and her can set something off in this whole place right here. By just coming together, touching hands, and praying over y'all community. And saying, God, you know, use us as your ambassadors. God, I don't care when we're driving through, we walk in the dog, let us meet somebody. Let us in, introduce Christ unto them. And you guys can, can utilize this place, this house. You guys start a little, you know, I'll come. I'll come. I'll come and help be a part of it. You guys can say, look, we meet every girl. You meet people and y'all start making disciples, connecting with people in this community. Say, girl, we have a little, little Bible study on, on this day here at the house. You guys can come, bam. And we can come and take part of it. And now what we're doing is we're colonizing. Ambassadors colonize the region that they go into. See, we're going into Altamont to colonize it. See, America is not who came up with the word colonization. Uh, and, and Britain and all the people. They, that's not where it started. It started with the kingdom of God. Jesus came as an ambassador to colonize the earth again. That's why Adam and Eve were sent. To colonize the earth. And to, and to, and to, and to, and to, and to perpetuate the mind of God. Perpetuate the views of God, perpetuate uh, 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 the personality and character of God to rule and subdue and have dominion in the earth. We was always intended to have power, y'all. That's why even from a very young age, them children, they want power. That little juicy fruit over there, he, he just, he, he, he lusts for power. He want to run stuff, but that's how he was supposed to always be. From our infancy, we were supposed to be people that rule, subdue, and have dominion. But now, you know, under this, under this, this structure and order that we have, we have to put little juicy fruit in place. Because he's not the king. And after a certain period of time, then he got to be, he got to fall in the order with the kingdom. There's only going to be one king. Everybody else has to have a king. And that's the king and that's the queen. And then y'all have to decide as ambassadors of the kingdom, how you want to perpetuate the mind of God in your home. And so, so I want you to understand, that I don't want you to call, I'm not going to call you guys leaders anymore. I'm going to call you ambassadors. I will not call anybody leaders simply anymore in Restoration Epicenter Church. I will call you ambassadors. Because I the only person that's going to make a difference when they're deployed is an ambassador. Not just a lowly old Christian old saint who just go in there. I just I made it to church. I used to hear people say all the time, girl, I just couldn't wait. Girl, I made it here. I made it to Sunday. I made it to Sunday. But whew, I know Pastor's going to have a word for us in the house. Girl, I'm hoping, hoping something can keep me till Wednesday. <laughs> that is not, I don't want, I, don't, I, I know we're going to have those type of people because we got to train them. But that's not where I want you to stop. Ambassadors are waiting to be deployed. Waiting to be sent out. And see, so as, as I'm talking about the kingdom, I want you to understand that it's so important that you understand what the kingdom is. First, the kingdom is Jesus. Matthew 6.33 says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And so the kingdom... The view of the kingdom that we only have, the only way we know how to, to, to understand and demonstrate the kingdom is by watching Jesus. He's the only, he was the ambassador. There's no other way that we can know anything about the kingdom is but through the demonstration and, and, and the quality and character of which what Jesus uh, embodied. Now I want to share this with you guys. First of all, let me just let me just stop before I, I move to the to the next thing. Is there, are there any comments, any any anything you guys have from what I've said so far? Any questions? Regarding being ambassador? Yeah, just anything about anything I said before I move. Does, does everybody kind of get an understanding? Have I lost you up to this point? Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? Okay, here we go. Now, with us talking about the kingdom of God, guy, we have to understand the purpose. This whole kingdom agenda of bringing, uh, 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 there's twofold. 
we are supposed to demonstrate the character, the ways, the views, uh, and reflect the nature of our kingdom that we represent in the earth. But number two, we're supposed to point people to the door so they can come out of darkness and come into the kingdom with us. So it's twofold. You have to demonstrate and live right. Yes, God wants you to prosper. He wants you to have a good life. But he wants you to point people to the way, to the truth, to the life. And so evangelism is very important if we're going to be kingdom ambassadors. We cannot call ourselves a kingdom ambassador if we don't talk to nobody about the kingdom, which is Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And so uh, today when I was coming, when I was uh, uh, running an errand for my mother, I saw the Jehovah's Witness walking around. <laughs> my uncle made a comment. He was like, he said, Eric, you know, nobody in the church should say anything about those Jehovah's Witness. I said, you know, you're right. Because at least they understand that they are an ambassador. Mm -hmm. And they don't care. If you're going to be an ambassador for the kingdom of God, you cannot worry about being rejected. you got to get... You got to get some tough skin. People are going to say no. People are going to say, I don't want to hear that. You know, you have to be okay with people saying, ah, you know, you're a little different. Why you don't do stuff like we do stuff, girl? I mean, why you, it, it don't take all that. Why, or, 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 why do you do that? You have to be okay with, with people not understanding you all the time. Okay? You have to be okay with being a point of difference. You got to be okay with going against the, the grain. I'm not saying being a being a, a pain in somebody's butt. I'm not talking about being mean and harsh, but you have to understand that you represent and so you can't be afraid, afraid of that. This is one thing if we're going to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God. We have to understand this that God is love. God is love. I want you to write down 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 and 16. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 and 16. This is the most dominant characteristic of an ambassador. Jesus was the chief ambassador. Okay? He was the chief apostle. This is the most dominant personality trait that we have to exemplify if we're going to be ambassadors of the kingdom and we're going to, 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 to be an example that people can look to and if we're going to demonstrate the character and nature of the kingdom of God. God is love. Please note, please note that he does not say that he has love, but he is love. This is an important distinction when it comes to understanding God's motivation. It was, God was motivated to create, it, create man because of his love. Now here we go. Naturally or supernaturally. To be a, a manifestation of his love. One of the obvious qualities of love. Here this is the point right here. Love is fulfilled when it gives and it shares itself. God said he's love. But he wouldn't be. He wouldn't truly be the embodiment of love. If he didn't share something. Or didn't give something away. That's why John 3.16 said. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. He gave his only begotten son. Love is not fulfilled unless it shares itself or it gives itself away. And so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So if we are going to be ambassadors, we have to love people enough and love God enough and demonstrate the love of God that we can't be stingy. We have to be willing to share to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. To share our life with people. To share in what in all the resources in which God puts into our hands. We have to be willing to share it. We can't be afraid of being a demonstration if God says, you know, that man standing right there, get that man $20. <laughs> Love says share. You don't know. Over the next couple of weeks, you see him, you might be, you gave him $20 to meet his physical need, but in the next week or so, you might be able to talk to him and just say, you know, hey, man, you know me. I, I hooked you up the last couple of weeks, man. I want to give you something else this week. What you got? Well, I, I'm seven gold. Have I none today? I have no seven gold today. But what I have, I want to share with you. Can I have two minutes of your time? And just like that, because you gave, in one instance, now the Spirit sets you up to lead that man to Christ. 
or to, to have a conversation with him. And so if we're going to be kingdom ambassadors, we have to be willing to give. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told me to say what he told me to do uh, this morning when I was taking a shower, getting prepared. Guys, I've been going through a whole lot today and yesterday. Fridays and Saturdays, I go through. My body has been, I've been feeling all types of things in my body. You know, I had a t you know, fever, a headache. I'm in the shower for 30 minutes just sitting under the water. I'm binding and I'm loosening. And I'm just like, why am, I, why am I going through this? It's because we're picking up momentum. You hear me? We're picking up momentum. The Spirit of God said we're picking up momentum. And as we're picking up momentum, this week, as we've been doing those prayers this week, mm -hmm. we are hitting targets. Mm -hmm. We're hitting targets. I saw in the vision when I was doing the prayer one day this week, I saw a bunch of beams of light. I, I wasn't asleep. I was awake. Okay? And while I'm, I'm sitting there praying, and when I got finished praying, I'm laying back and I'm worshiping, and all of a sudden, I see this vision. And I see this vision of these, like, you know what a bolt of lightning looks like. I'm seeing, like, five or six bolts coming from all over the place in the sky. And they all came together and formed this huge white light. And the Lord says, Eric, that's what's happening with this prayer. Tell them to keep pushing. After this week is over, just pray that prayer at night. We're going we're gonna to meet back up to pray in the morning. But pray that prayer at night. That ball of light is the gate of heaven opening over that area. It's the gate that as we're praying God is releasing his angels. His angels are so excited because they get to kick some butt. They get to do some stuff that they ain't been able to do. Because we, the Bible says that when we praise, we pray amiss. We don't know what to pray. When we ask the thing, we ask for the wrong things. But when God hears a people calling for his kingdom to come Calling for the dispossession of things that are not like God. Rooting out, pulling down, destroying, and throwing down. God said, oh yeah, now I can build and plant something. And I want you guys to know you're hitting targets. That's why you felt that pain in your body this week. Because anytime you, die, you go into direct combat, I don't know a person in my life that has ever started a head-up fight and didn't get hit. Mike Tyson might have been the closest thing. <laughs> but he still did get hit. But... If you're going to engage in head-on-head -head combat, you're going to get a blow. I told y'all this week, we're going to start going after some things specifically, and that's going to draw some specific attention to us. And that's why my body has been uh, getting attacked in, in my sleep and things of that nature. But this is good. I don't. I, I, ain't, I ain't bothered by that. You know, I'm going to bring it on. Y'all just keep, keep me covered and keep doing what y'all doing, all right? But, but listen here. Um, so I saw these... This, this ball of light. Listen to me. Let's keep doing that prayer. Keep, because the Bible says the prayers of the righteous avail of much. I, we, we, now, now this, this is what I want you to understand. As kingdom ambassadors, we don't ask for things amiss. If I am the ambassador of the United States of America, I don't ask the United States for stuff. If I need it, if I see there's a need in the territory you put it in, I make a demand for it. Ambassadors, call it in. I'm calling in forces for this area. I'm calling in forces for Liz. I see things that need to happen. So, so, so you have to understand that your whole posture and prayer has got to change. Ambassadors don't beg for nothing. We don't beg for nothing because we have authority. We have favor. We have God is saying, you ain't got to beg me. It's like having a child and, 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 and you got what they need, and you ready to, you know, you ready to give them that. Mommy, please, mommy, please, you have to beg. I got this. Okay, now this is what God told me to tell us to do, okay. I want to ask for you guys today to give a sacrificial offering. It's not coming to me. This offering is not for me. If you, I would like, right now, if you guys can give a sacrificial offering. I got 10 right there. Now this sacrificial offering, this sacrificial offering, the Lord told me is supposed to go to Liz and Juan. Okay? 
When he said give a sacrificial offering, I'm going to be honest. When God said give a sacrificial offering, when he said give a sacrificial offering, let me see. I got 20. Yeah. Okay. When he said give a sacrificial offering, my first thought was, for me? For little old me? And the, <laughs> and the Lord thinking a way to do it. And the Lord told me to, to, to ask for a sacrificial offering. And he told me to give it to you. And just because. God, he, he's our father. He does what he wants. We don't, we don't always make. Um, we can't choose and decide what God does. But we have to be obedient to him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, get that other five dollars. <laughs> so he told me today. Uh, and he didn't tell me until the last minute. So I was like, who? Who? What is it for, Lord? What is this money for? I got to tell him something. He said, it's for Juan and Liz. He said it to me while I was taking a shower. He said, I just want them to know that, that I, I know the thoughts. I, 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 I'm thinking about it. And so, when she comes up with her 20, and Johnny comes back with his money, I'm going to pray over it. And I'm going to pray for this to be a first fruit of unexpected blessings that's going to begin to hit you guys. This is not what Pastor Little didn't do this. God did. And guys, I'm telling you, what, we've been, what, what have we been praying about? What have we been praying? We've been praying in our prayers for supernatural favor to begin to hit all of our finances and blessings to begin to manifest in our life. And so, God said that he was going to begin to show the manifestation of it because we've been praying, but he's getting ready to start showing manifestations. And part of the manifestations, he said, I'm going to start it in the group first. Before you guys start seeing things happen outside the group, he said, I'm going to start manifesting things in the group. And so, um, let's take that. Johnny must be going to get him $100 out of the thing. Look at that. Look at God. is still adding to the, to the bunch. Look at it. Look at it. I wish I could give $100, $200. I would show sure get it. I tried to get some money earlier. And take it. <laughs> Miss Chicken, you always hearing from God. Girl, look at you. Yeah, she, she, you played me good. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you got me, Chicken. 